obviously, at the game against Illinois and to look forward to the Purdue game. Damon, they suffer their first loss in overtime. Any reaction change from you from first time watching it Friday to watching it through again over the weekend? Yeah, that's a – for me, it was a lot. I, I felt like – because during the course of that game live, I felt like – there was this stretch where I felt like if Nebraska could have scored, mm -hmm. uh, that Illinois was maybe ready to tap out for all the hand-wringing and consternation about the defense. And it clearly needed to be better. So yeah. hear my heart there. I felt like Nebraska had three opportunities to push that thing to a two-score yeah. game offensively, and they didn't get it done either. So I think – I'm a little more encouraged about the ability to play complementary football and, and 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 we'll see what happens. Yeah. You and Robbie mentioned on the radio yesterday, but it seems like two things can be true at once. Nebraska's defense can still be good and have to improve in areas, but Illinois could also be good and not have gotten as much credit as maybe they have going mm -hmm. into that Nebraska game. Yeah, I think that's key, right? I There were some things schematically that I felt like, Illinois was really, really efficient, and they were allowed to get in a rhythm because they possessed the ball. But a lot of it was because they kept winning on first down, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you're rushing the ball for over five yards per carry on first down, which was almost a full yard and a half more than what they ended up rushing for with just their running backs. So I felt like Nebraska was kind of on their heels a little bit, but a lot of that you have to give credit to Illinois and how they attacked Nebraska offensively. I think the other thing with that is for Nebraska to tackle better, I think there has to be a lot more trust in terms of where guys fit in the run game. Because if I know that the guy to the left of me and the guy to the right of me has got my back and I can fit in the run game and be aggressive, I feel like that leads to more confident tackling. When I'm kind of out in an island – and the guy's got a two-way go, and they're pretty good too, eh, I'm probably not as confident mm -hmm. as a tackler. So the whole physicality thing I thought was a little overblown. I think for Nebraska, getting back to the basics in terms of doing their 111 will be the key for this defense. Yeah, we'll turn our attention to Nebraska, but do you see Illinois giving other Big Ten teams fits this season? Well, I think it, maybe. You know, I – Altmaier's playing well. Yeah. You know, he he came into that game with seven touchdowns and no interceptions. Mm -hmm. So clearly he was ten, playing. Ten last year. Yeah. Clearly yeah. he was he was playing at a high level. Now, this was a different degree of opponent. But according to all the experts, they saw this coming based on how Nebraska played against Northern mm -hmm. Iowa. So maybe he did it against a team that wasn't very yeah. good. I don't know. It just depends on yeah. <laughs> which criticism you want to listen to. <laughs> yeah. Hearing from Coach Rule, other coaches and players, anything stick out this week? Yeah. Th so there's three things, and I'll put them in order because I think this is how it goes. Number one is Coach Rule. You heard him be very candid and very honest about um, addressing the elephant in the room, and that is guys need to at some point embrace the moment. Mm -hmm. Don't overthink it. Uh, don't be traumatized by it. Fall back on your training. Do the little things. Uh, Colorado matters as much as Northern Iowa, as much as Northern Iowa matters like Illinois. That was number one. He was clear mm -hmm. and very repetitive over that. Number two, the players were ready to flush it. I felt like sometimes when people are, are ready to move on, they're dismissive. Mm -hmm. And when you're dismissive, there's probably no real lesson learned, right? Yeah. You ever talk to somebody and – and your immediate reaction is to respond mm -hmm. versus hearing what they said. Mm -hmm. well, with this team, especially the guys on Tuesday at the press conference, I heard, you know, this one was about we getting back to, to preparation. Yeah. Making sure that, that last Monday looks like this Monday, that the next Monday looks like that Monday. Attention to detail. You can you can enjoy the moment, but then you have to move on. Mm -hmm. And so it gets back to discipline. I thought MJ Sherman was fantastic yeah. this week. And if that team shares his sentiment and that kind of business-like approach, the defense will be okay. And then I listened to Dylan, mm -hmm. right, where um, there was a lot of ownership, a lot of accountability, um, moving on to the next while understanding where you need to get better. Mm -hmm. It's pretty important for me, and this is just my personality. I think it's critical. You can understand history in the past, but you can't be held captive by it. Yeah, you don't have to sit in it. Yeah, right? Yeah. So I, I kind of like I kind of like that. And then the third thing is they had an extra day for it to stew. Mm -hmm. And I'm just Whether telling you. Whether they liked it or not. I, I'm, <laughs> just, I'm just telling you. Mm-hmm. 
it's an aggravate it's yeah. it's an aggravating feeling mm-hmm. i'm sure they feel like this week has taken forever mm-hmm. and sometimes that can be a real positive when you're chomping at the bit yeah we talked about this it felt like i think coming off the uni game and we have another situation again where it feels like it replicates what happened last year against michigan mm-hmm. we're going on the road and mm-hmm. they're going to go in against illinois team we're going to define what this team is and they have that opportunity this week that se- it seems like there was a calm confidence from some of the guys i mean you mentioned mj i i love listening to him talk he's one of my yeah. favorites for sure but the way he spoke like we don't need to make these big changes yeah like, we're he, good yeah it's it fine. was funny like, too he, he was like, almost aggravated right yeah. it was like we don't need a motivational speaker we don't need a rah-rah we don't we need to yeah. just be better at what we do and i love that because mm-hmm. at some point you know it's funny we talked about this last <laughs> week at some point you have to become comfortable being your own benchmark And you want it to be about you, Mm -hmm. not about the opponent. When Nebraska gets to that point where it's like, okay, have I laid it on the line? Am I the best version of myself? And we don't worry about who they're playing. Then you don't have to worry about the ebbs and Mm -hmm. flows. You won't have to have a coach say, Illinois wanted to beat us. But, you know, we wanted to beat Colorado. Like, you won't have those emotional pendulums. Mm -hmm. You'll just say, you'll put in the work. Mm -hmm. And you'll make all these little deposits yeah. throughout the week. And then you know that the weekend is when you get to go spend money. Mm-hmm. You won't worry about where you're shopping. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's interesting. I, I reflect back to the conversations we had in the summer with some of the defensive guys. You're talking about all the hand wringing. Let's remember that this team is made up of, especially the defense, guys like a Ty Robinson and Ash Hotmacher who decided to come back for another year because their favorite moment of last season was the fourth and goal line stop against Illinois. Yeah. Right? Yeah, like. It's, I think, you know, I was going to talk about kind of being dismissive and ready to move on. When you're dismissive, there's no real accountability. Mm -hmm. With these guys, they're ready to move on because the taste in their mind, it's such a bad Mm -hmm. taste from why they're there to begin with. That becomes the motivating factor. They're not dismissive because they're acting like it did. They don't, they're not acting like it didn't happen. Mm Mm-hmm. They're ready to move on to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Absolutely. That's the that's, that's the, the difference. difference. Yeah, and I think a bright spot we can talk about from last weekend is the development conversation. I mean, this is a developmental program. We've heard that, right? Now we've seen multiple guys come in and fill in positions. Last week we had Sayer Wright and Gunnar Katula, and we heard the coaches say that. I mean, Tony White said Sayer might have been the most competitive guy out there. Uh, Sat was like when Gunnar went in, it wasn't even like we were like, oh, no, Gunnar's out there. It feels like we're watching – action match words they talk about hey we get everyone gets reps everyone to better prepare because they're going to get their shot how has that been a bright spot in the development you've seen in year two so what i like i'll just take the individual guys you know gatula is almost too young to know any better he just wants an opportunity Mm -hmm. right this is my time and that's how he's embracing it i've I've prepared well i've trained well where sierra you watch him and not everything he did was technically right or even sometimes the right defensive calls but he solved problems with aggression Mm -hmm. right and i that is so understated now don't get me wrong you can't just blow coverages Mm -hmm. and things like that because we saw enough of that right on friday but being decisive and sure there's just something to playing on the balls of your feet and not your heels Mm -hmm. and that's what we saw from sierra now do i think he went rogue a few times sure but when you're aggressive in mm-hmm. this sport, you, it'll mask a lot. And so I yeah. think they can ride that. And it's just another example with Gunner and, and Sierra. And I'm glad you used those guys because, you know, Coach Rule, some of the critics weren't as happy. Well, you know, you need to be like Dylan and Ja'Cory. And, and, be, and he wasn't absolving those guys of any culpabilities in terms of them not playing well. What he's saying is they're just loose. They're like – they're here. They're right where their feet are. Mm-hmm. Like, be like those guys. So I, I, I love the Gatula and, and the Sierra Wright references because those are a couple of different guys, mm-hmm. but the example is still applicable. Yeah. Well, let's talk about Purdue. This is a team that likes to rush, and if there's an opportunity for Nebraska to return to the basics like they've talked about all week, what are they re- what do they return to in terms of basics to just stop the run this yeah, weekend? Yeah, not to bring up old stuff, but to bring up old stuff, Nebraska fans remember Huckabee. Mm-hmm. Uh, Devin Huckabee is a guy that kind of had his coming out party a couple years ago against Nebraska, and he came off the bench behind a couple guys that were had already had been dinged and Mm -hmm. and he stole the show right nebraska couldn't get off the field Mm -hmm. on a critical fourth down and 
There was a lot. So I think for for them and, and, and Purdue is quietly, you know, last year they were third in the conference in rushing the football. This yep. year they're currently sitting fifth. Yep. And they got a nice tandem. You know, Maccabee's a uh, – He's an unorthodox style runner. You know, his legs are everywhere, his arms are mm-hmm. everywhere, but what he is is efficient. He's going mm-hmm. for almost eight yards a carry. Um, he's got a little love with him this time, and Reggie Love, who's kind of been the burst guy. Mm-hmm. But he's at six yards per carry. Yeah. So um, if if Nebraska wants to figure out, okay, who are we? Is Are we more you and I, Illinois, or are we more Nebraska of, of last year? It's right here in front of them with yeah. these two guys that are run the football because yeah. Purdue is going to try to run the football. Yeah, which last week that was one of your points, and that's probably going to be a point every week, but you have to win the turnover battle. Nebraska just wasn't able to capitalize last week. Where do you see Nebraska making Purdue vulnerable and also just making them one-dimensional? Yeah, so I, they've struggled outside the numbers. The wide receiving core hasn't been healthy, and Hudson Card will give you two or three balls a game that are, that are turnover worthy. Mm-hmm. Nebraska's got to make them pay when they get their hands on those footballs that are kind of up for grabs. Catch it, go the other way. I think the other thing is, is to get Purdue behind the sticks. They have to win. Nebraska's got to get back to winning on first down where you, you don't allow teams to rush the ball and get to second and six or second and five. Those, those are tough downs. I mean, second and five, the whole playbook is open to the offense. And so, Nebraska's got to get back to winning on first down defensively. And if they do, I think they can put Card in some precarious spots because I'm not sure Purdue is as dynamic outside the numbers Mm -hmm. as they want to be. And certainly their health hasn't indicated that they're where they need to be. Yeah. Last weekend, D-line wasn't able to pressure Luke Altmaier quite like they had in the past previous weeks. Do you see this being a game where the Ties and the Nash and Jamaris can take over that O-line differently than they did last weekend? Yeah, I think a healthy Jamari Butler will help. And the thing about Altmaier that is different from Card is, while Card has a little escapability and can move within the pocket, Altmaier's poise. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a difference between getting a quarterback to the ground and actually generating pressure. I wasn't so down on Nebraska's pressure is – as much as pass rushing integrity. Like, if my edges are coming off at this high rate of speed and they're getting vertical, well, they were doing that against Illinois. The problem is, is Altmaier would step up into the pocket. We weren't getting the push because that's where the double Mm -hmm. team was happening. And so he would step up and then out. Mm -hmm. And he would buy himself time. I'm not sure Card is that guy necessarily. But what Nebraska has a chance to do that they didn't last week is understand their opponent and in particular the quarterback, escapability. What do they like to do when they move within the pocket? And then you set the pass rush accordingly. You don't just rush the passer willy-nilly and say, hey, get mm-hmm. vertical. Yeah. You have to understand where your landmarks are and be disciplined. I, I think you'll see Nebraska get back to that, and I hope we get a healthy Jamari, Jamari. Butler. Yeah. How much does going on the road for the first game – of the year factor into just what Nebraska wants to prove this week? So it's just interesting. It's a great question. If Nebraska was undefeated, mm-hmm. I would feel differently. I would give you a different answer. Yeah. But because they're coming off a loss, I feel like they'll be dialed, mm-hmm. and it's a good time to get away from home. It, if they were 4-0, and I'd say, hey, be careful Mm -hmm. you're going on the road against an opponent that is kind of laying in the weeds and you had been afforded the friendly confines of being at home Mm -hmm. the the conversation is completely Completely different different now it's like you spent a lot of time listening to a lot of things the last four weeks here Mm -hmm. now you get a chance to go on the road with just your crew yeah and go to work against a desperate team that's going to give you everything they have. Mm-hmm. I would. This isn't one of those games where I'd sell Purdue short. Yeah. You break this game down to three things. What are they for Nebraska? So, number one, I think you have to stay the course, right? I, it's There's this tug of war emotionally that happens with Nebraska where, you know, ultimately in, in October and in meaningful games in November, you want to be able to run the football. But you have to be okay with knowing you have this really talented right, right, right arm that's maybe not throwing the ball around the yard as much as as you'd like, right? When Dylan isn't f- making plays with his arm, you're probably th- it probably makes you uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. I know we have this bright new toy. I want to play. <laughs> but Nebraska's got to be patient. Mm-hmm. Stay the course because ultimately handoff run game is going to need to be there, and I think it will really help 
Dylan later on in this game where Nebraska may have a chance to extend. Number two is play in space with confidence. When I'm on defense and I see something in front of me, I want to pick a spot and I want to go. I don't want to be tentative. I want to shoot my shot. So when Nebraska's in space, be confident. And then number three, play for one another, right? The whole one of 11 thing is not just some moniker, right? You, you have to get the job done as an individual, but think collectively as a unit. That's a key for me. Uh, play for one another, especially on the road in your first one. Yeah, well, there we have it. Nebraska hit the road and play Purdue this weekend. We'll be back next week to recap whether they win or lose on the road and what we have next weekend.